Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> what a great intro. Well, welcome everybody to In The Buff. Today we've got Scott, Cody, John, and of course your host, Chris. All right, see you in about an hour. Yep. <laughs> uh, do we want to do a couple of quick comments here? Sure. Yeah. All right, not? we're only going to do comments that intrigue us. Right. How about that? That are good enough. Okay. I'm intrigued by, by every Blitzball comment. Well, here's the thing. I say we intrigue us, but I'm going to be the one reading the comments, so it's mm, whatever intrigues yeah. Right, right. On our most recent podcast episode, the Warhammer episode... Kyle's Corner. Let's call it something else. It's called something else. Well, they'll just have to watch the video to know what it's called. Mm -hmm. Right. Kyle, chiming in, longtime friend of the channel, if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. He said two-part comment. One, that he has acquired the files. In the video, we were talking about some STL 3D printer files that... Hold on, he's just gonna lay claim to pirating files? No, he acquired those files in a perfectly legitimate and legal fashion. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Covering is more likely. Mm. Second, John, in regards to demons not being good, I don't mean that their numbers aren't good enough, but that they aren't fulfilling to the fantasy of the faction, and that internal balance is terrible right now. If that doesn't make quite that much sense, go back and watch that episode. And then it will. Or don't. No, definitely do that. I feel like I could go back and watch the episode, and it will not help me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle does an amazing job of explaining things to me in a way that I won't understand it. <laughs> Your beard's looking a little bit white there. Did you get hit by the ghost? What are you talking about, Scott? An aging ghost. <laughs> How about another uh, longtime friend of the channel commenting on the last episode of the podcast, Mozzie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be out of character. Uh, but he did his two-part comment in one comment this Incredible. time. Incredible. Growth is what we call that. Yep, progression. Progression fantasy. I want more comments. Well, here you'll get in one. <laughs> From Monsi. She says she'll be the leader of the Imperial Knights, because she is the Sith Lord. Oh. Darth Monsi. More character growth. <laughs> uh, and then finally, on that episode, same episode, uh, podcast host Chris Fole, he said first. Wow. Wait, do you have your first and last name what on your year YouTube? is it? No. Oh. And then a couple of people talking about Final Fantasy, which we don't need to get into right now. Right, 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 right. So, guys, anything else? Any any other housekeeping we need to get up to? One thing I would like to say, one of the people who came to our channel because of Final Fantasy appeared on our stream mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. So, Scott... They're growing. They're learning. They're adapting. It wasn't Final Fantasy, so he left, but... <laughs> he, 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 he... <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why we didn't start streaming on YouTube sooner. And, We'd all yeah. been streaming on our own individual Twitch channels with between 9 and 20 followers mm -hmm. when our YouTube channel has 2,000 followers. Honestly, if I can get this lazy asshole, I pointed at John... To move his goddamn PS4 into his computer room, then we'll probably start streaming Rocket League. I can huh? stream Rocket League, too. But you can't have our video. You can't have our Discord audio. Sure. He can. He can, he can too. I could do that. Show, prove it to me. Right, okay. Do okay. it right now. I will. I will. Mm -hmm. Not right now, but maybe later. Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe I can't do it. All right, I can't do it. I believe in that. <laughs> no, no, no. I believe in you. Okay, that's good. I can't. I, I'll be. I'll learn to do it. Great. I won't learn. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. a certain somebody's corner. It's my corner. Who? Mine. Ah. Do you know me? Have we met before? Hi, Cody. Right. Nice to meet you. Right. So I had a bit of a fun idea for a corner this episode. Recently, I found a parody song. That is parroting the classic Bowling for Soup anthem, 1985. And the reason... Did you just hear that ghost? Yeah. I think I've been followed. <laughs> Continue. Hey, if you uh, want to know what that's about, uh, stay tuned. Because <laughs> we're going to be putting out some videos about when we went and what visited a spooky, scary house and stayed the night. And maybe we recorded some footage. And maybe... 
we found evidence of the supernatural or the paranormal. We might have evidence or the paranormal, but not go- not or probably the supernormal. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a very normal house. <laughs> Nothing interesting about it at all. Everything was beige. Regardless, <laughs> <laughs> everything was beige. <laughs> Most, it's the most normal color. I so, agree. this parody song got made. It was called 2004 because the original song 1985 by Bowling for Soup was written in 2004. And now the amount of time between 1985 and 2004 has elapsed between 2004 and present day 2023. Wow. And so the essence of this parody song, 2004, was to capture what it was like living in the mid-2000s. And there was just just this wave of nostalgia that hit me as I listened to this song and watched the music video. It was a very well done song. We'll link it in the description. And it got me thinking about what life was like back then and i realized all of us were alive back then and i think it was in a very important mm, this chris wasn't <laughs> no no he, he was. wasn't born yet no no he was living in the swiss alps at the time mm-hmm. but he was alive can we just add to chris lore whenever it's brought up <laughs> he has Wait, you weren't born in america <laughs> we don't talk about that we had to run are you here I... legally his mother's american embassy uh, I'm I'm here under public. Uh, uh, Let's listen to him improv. <laughs> Let's listen, that's really good. Chris was also born with a tail, so <laughs> his mother was American, uh, and his father was a mysterious Spanish gentleman she mm. met in oh, Barcelona. That actually tracks. I'm way more worldly than I thought. <laughs> so you the... should do a 23 and me. <laughs> I think he has. <laughs> Sorry, Cody. It's fine. We'll eventually get He has there. the highest percentage of uh, of Neanderthal than anyone <laughs> has ever been there. He's uh, actually 4% there. grass man. <laughs> 96% Neanderthal, 4% grass man. And 100% reason to remember his name. <laughs> nice. That's good. <sighs> nice. Look at that waveform. <laughs> So we were all alive in the mid 2000s. <laughs> Hell yeah, we were. And we were all between 7 and 13 years of age, between the years of like 2002 and 2006. And I think that was like some really important years. We were old enough to not just be dumb babies anymore, to actually start developing personalities and interests and hobbies. But it was also before life started getting more serious. It was all kind of like preteen era. Uh, We hadn't gone to high school yet. This was all late elementary and middle school. And that's just an interesting time. And I think I'd like to share, as like a PSA almost, of what life was like living in the mid-2000s. I don't necessarily want this to be a list or a zeitgeist of everything relevant during those years. And Mm. I also don't want it to be like a member berries type conversation, though I think There'll be plenty of that, and I'm okay if it devolves into that a bit. But I just wanted to share what it was like back then, because I think it was a very different time, even though it feels very recent. Things have changed drastically in the last 19 years. Dude, so when we were kids and adults were like, oh, the 90s, I remember it like it was yesterday, bruh. (laughs) <laughs> and we're like, you're fucking stupid, mom. <laughs> and here we are. It Like, Halo Reach feels like it was not long ago. Mm-hmm. Like, I was thinking about it, and Spider-Man 2 for the PS5 came out this year. Mm-hmm. One of the best... Like, sp- came out three days ago. Yeah. And probably, arguably, the best Spider-Man game that's ever been made. And I realized that a different Spider-Man 2 got released... In 2004, on the PlayStation 2, and it was probably considered the best Spider-Man game ever made at the time. And that was 20 years ago. Yeah. It was definitely, like, an unlocking point for video games. Mm -hmm. Because, like, they probably made the game, and they're like, dude, something feels right about this. And then people are playing, they're like, this is good. Well, the thing that felt right about it 
for me was just the swinging. That's yeah, the yeah. thing that felt right. That is the fantasy yeah. in a Spider-Man game. Mm-hmm. And I think so many games try to make dealing with the game fun. And that usually involves how do you make travel between missions fun. Mm-hmm. And Spider-Man just has it in spades. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like you were talking about how you saw somebody playing the newest Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, and they finish a mission, and then their next mission marker is like... 2,000 kilometers away or something. Yeah. <laughs> 2,000 kilometers, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Halfway across the country. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'd think about that, and if I was playing it, I'd be like, awesome, great. That's two mu- 200 kilometers of me just web swinging <laughs> and having fun. And I think that first Spider-Man 2 in 2004 for the PlayStation 2 is like captured that so mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Honestly, 2004 was a banner year. Uh, for me, I think for a lot of us, not just in terms of like cultural le- relevance or media or anything like that. I think it was just like a perfect storm that I didn't give enough credit to. So where should we start <laughs> with this? Well, I've, I've been thinking about it uh, in term, at least in my head, in terms of the mm-hmm. medium that media is presented so, like, there's music, there's comic books, there's video games, there's TV, there's mm-hmm. movies, that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, so, uh, we could start like that. Pick one. We move forward. Sure. I think something that we can talk about is how much culturally relevant media was being produced during this time. Mm-hmm. Starting in, we're looking at like 2002 to 2006 specifically, though we're, it's a little fuzzy. It doesn't have to be exactly that. I was thinking like after 9-11, but before the seventh generation of consoles. So Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, mm-hmm. and all that. And those released in like 2006, 2006 2007? 2005, okay. 2006. Okay. Actually, probably a better... Actually, I think I wrote down... Uh, yeah, Xbox was 2005. A better marker might even be the release of the iPhone in 2007. Yeah, because yeah. things fundamentally change mm-hmm. with the release of smartphones. Uh, that's, uh, Android? <laughs> that's, that's genuinely, um, people have talked to, I don't know, not experts or anything, but they've talked about how that is when the future started. I mm-hmm. was watching these guys, I think it was last podcast on the left. Uh, they were watching footage from something that happened. I think it might have been 9 11. They were watching footage that uh, happened back then. And one of the hosts was like, Since when did fucking footage from 2003 look like it was from 1986? Right, <laughs> right. Dude. So you said after 9 11, right? Mm hmm. So the only major thing that really affected me after, after 9 11 was probably Super Smash Bros. Melee. Oh my gosh, Super Hell Smash yeah. Bros. And that was the first game that made me distance from my friends because I was so ass <laughs> at that game. And everybody's like, uh, just play this character. Meanwhile, I'm just playing fucking uh, Jigglypuff, just rolling out back and yeah, forth. Because it was fun that's, to watch. That's all I had. That's all I had. It was either that or fucking up B Link. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my go-to. It's, I I, I, my, I, was a, I was a Link main in uh, Melee. I, I was, actually won a tournament once. Uh, Sheik and Marth. Yep. Yep. Dude, you guys were so good at that. You actually won a tournament? Okay. Yeah. Here in town. Wow. I won That's like crazy. a gift card. At the library? What, yep. For what? For a... Blockbuster? Uh, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what it was. I can't remember at Back the time. Back when it used to be relevant. Yep. And this was, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what was the um the video store chain? Movie gallery. Movie gallery. Movie gallery. Yeah. So, yep. this is like... This is like what I mean by... I don't just want it to be like, here's right, all the right, movies right. that came out. It was such an important part of our lives growing up, going to movie gallery, looking through all the racks of games that were available and renting one for like five days. You got that game for the Mm -hmm. week and then you brought it back and then you went back and you did it again. And sometimes you got some bangers (laughs) and sometimes you picked crap. And sometimes like you went for a very specific thing and you accidentally got the wrong thing Mm -hmm. and you're like, this is pretty cool. Or you're like, I dad, I got the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> or you'd you'd have something very specific in mind, and they're just like, sorry, all of our copies are out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, they were, especially in the PlayStation 1 era, there were so many garbage, like, Green Army Man games. Yeah. There was, like, mm-hmm. dozens 
just based on like the little toys, the Green Army Man toys. When I was a kid, what? I just assumed it was a tie-in to Toy Story. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what we're talking about. It's, really? It's just toy soldiers. Yep. The little green this plastic. Is, I know what we're talking about. They were kind of like gun I games. I never saw any games mm-hmm. like these. They were like almost like isometric. A lot of them were isometric where it was just like a, 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 top, a, down. a top down view and huh. you just like shot people in different environments. Interesting. And there were so many of them and I played so many of them. Also, something I realized is how many crappy movie tie-in games <laughs> I played oh, during so this many. era. Like... I think about that now as an adult, and I'm like, who's buying this? It's kids. It's 100% (laughs) kids. It's children. And they, most of the time, they're loving it, because they don't understand anything else. It's kids, and it's that weird 20 to 25-year-old adult that (laughs) likes it a little bit too much. Angry video game nerd. My cousin does not watch our podcast, so, you know. Joe? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Like, he was the one who introduced me to... The Star Wars The Phantom Menace video game. <laughs> really? Yeah. The one you had a dream about. The one that, that, that I dream. dreamt about the final boss against yeah. Darth Maul yeah. for like a month straight. <laughs> I can I only I could only kill him with a rocket launcher. I just want to clarify something. This is a way callback to a previous episode here. Were you dreaming that you were yourself watching the TV playing it? I was dreaming that I was Obi-Wan, but I was watching it from the lens of the video game. Okay, yep. but like you're being controlled by a controller. I could tell I was controlling myself as the controller, but I was also like my face was on Obi Wan's <laughs> pixelated body, <laughs> low poly Obi Wan. Uh, while we're at Star Just Wars, a bald twelve year old mm. John. Um, when I was little, I was too dumb to understand that we were watching the guy that was going to become Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> so when 2004 hit, or whichever, Goes I think by. 2005, when Revenge of the Sith happens, I'm like, he that's just, the guy? He just killed a bunch of kids. <laughs> he just killed a bunch of kids. He's Darth Vader? Where's the fucking helmet? <laughs> <laughs> You're so see, stupid. No! no see that? <laughs> there it is. I see the helmet now. Oh. <laughs> it's him, it's him, it's him. See, that's interesting that, you, like, that's the whole conceit of the prequel trilogy yep. is that you have that dramatic irony like, that foreshadowing even even my brother was like that's darth vader right there i'm like no it's not <laughs> that's little annie that doesn't look like him that's anakin skywalker see this is really interesting because i watched the prequel trilogy before i watched the original trilogy Ooh. Mm. i definitely watched the original trilogy uh but like i said i was too young to understand i was just like you read like read late this is cool. I think this is important to bring up that there was so much culturally relevant media going on at this time. The Star Wars prequel trilogy was going strong. 2002, we saw Attack of the Clones. Mm-hmm. Sam Raimi's Spider Man trilogy yep. started mm-hmm. at this time. Mm-hmm. The Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson films were going on at the time. Two Towers came out this year. Ang Lee's Hulk. I <laughs> fell asleep yes. during the Two Towers. Yeah. When I was little. Wow. Yep. Uh, the Harry Potter movies were being made. Men in Black 2 had mm. just come out. and I had a crush on the lady. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Men in Black 2. I had a crush on the lady from Men in Black 1 as well. I hate her face. I <laughs> loved her face. <laughs> and uh, Spy Kids was still going strong. Spy oh Kids 2 came God. out in 2002. Yeah, baby. Fucking, that just made me think of Shark Girl. No, Shark, Shark Boy and Lava, Lava Girl. Girl. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, uh, on the game side, the original... Spider-Man, based on the Sam Raimi movie, came out this year. I remember that being a very good game. I played the hell out of it. Yep. You missed a really important movie. Yeah? Ice Age. Ice Age was big for me. I didn't miss it. (laughs) Ice Age was huge. (laughs) It was not as big for me. (laughs) Oh, my family swallowed that shit. (laughs) Excuse me? That was like, like, my mom, every once in a while, will still ask if I want to watch it, because she has it on, uh, like, VHS. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... We nobody has those. <laughs> I can't. I can't watch it. I can't just go to Netflix, mom. <laughs> also, the Scooby Doo live action movie. Definitely. Oh yes, yes. I, I forgot about that. That 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 introduced me to Matthew Lillard. Lily Lily Lillard. Lillard. That was a star-studded cast, actually. Matthew Lillard, Freddie Prince Jr., uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, who played Daphne. No, no, no. It's uh, mm-hmm. Michelle Garner. Michelle. Michelle. Jennifer Garner. No, it's the mm-hmm. Buffy. 
lady. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yep. Fuck. I don't remember her name. I don't remember her name either. Shit. But yeah. Hawkeye's Hawkeye's wife plays Vilma. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does. I believe Rowan Atkinson was also it. He was like the false bad guy. Yep, he yeah. was. Hmm. I love Mr. That B. movie was ahead of its time. Disagree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the final Austin Powers came out during this time. Is Gold that member? Right? Gold member. I didn't know that. I had no clue. <laughs> it's the third Austin Powers movie. I they have never. I don't think I've ever seen Gold Member, and I certainly didn't see it in two thousand. You quoted it before. You, well, yeah, because <laughs> I've, I've talked to you guys, <laughs> and you guys quote it all the time. Uh, again, the tie-in video games. We had Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets. Great game. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed that. Never Lord played. of the Rings Two Towers. Also stellar game. Everybody gives Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Uh, all the props, but Two Towers was really good, and uh, here's something funny. People give Return of the King, that game, a lot of credit, and the only time I've ever played it was on a demo disc that came out of a Pop-Tart box. Dude, so I was actually going to talk about demo discs yeah, and how important they were. Oh, you get, like, Xbox Magazine or PlayStation Magazine, then they just give you a disc a disc, a physical <laughs> disc in the mail with like five or six demos on it and you can just mm-hmm. try them out. The problem with this Return of the King demo was that it was scratched all the hell because it was uh. on a Pop-Tart box. <laughs> <laughs> and so I could never finish the demo because it would always crash or Rip. freeze up. <laughs> he still doesn't know what happens. I don't I remember, know. I'm still waiting. I remember, I forget which one it was. It was either Crash or Spyro, but one of them, actually maybe both of them, had the first level of each game. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm like, dude... These guys are smart. They're like, they're like putting like each other's games out there for each other. Like these guys are scratching each other's backs. I love both of these. And I don't think I've ever like, other than, uh, there was a demo disc that had like 30 different demos on it Mm -hmm. in like 2006 or something. Like I'd never seen anything else like that. Yep. Probably one of the most important games that came out that year, particularly for me, I think for John too, Kingdom Hearts. Yep. This game changed. I I don't I don't want to say fundamentally changed my life, but it was a pivotal game in my childhood. I played this game so much, and I also played its sequel so much. So I cried at the end of Final Fantasy X <laughs> with how important that game was to me. Like yeah. how much it hit me emotionally. I was like, I was like, dude. No other game is going to make me feel this way. Oh, yeah? And then, like, you get to the part where Sora sacrifices himself and turns into a Heartless. And I'm like... (laughs) My guy's dead! I played with him for 20 hours! (laughs) Well, Chris cried when he turned a corner and saw a doll, so... (laughs) (laughs) You think that's impressive? I hate uh, Kingdom Hearts. I feel nothing about Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. Kingdom Hearts was so huge. Mm-hmm. Because, like, <laughs> I think it kind of hit nostalgia before hitting nostalgia was a big thing. That is interesting. Because it immediately, like, the first thing, the idea is, like... Remember Tarzan? Disney? Yeah. Remember Tarzan and Lion King and all these really cool films from the 90s? They were really cool. Anyway, they, they were great. Winnie the Pooh. Was there. I will really cool destroy you. Is Winnie the Pooh that cool to you? Winnie the Pooh is all right. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is cool. <laughs> See, that's what I. That's one of the things I wanted to bring up about this time period, is that we we the '90s was the Disney Renaissance, right? <laughs> we, mm-hmm. Um, and so you had banger after banger coming out from Disney uh, animation, and then you had like their acquisition of that 3D studio that will become Pixar. Mm-hmm. And so they're like competing with themselves at that time. And Pixar is fucking phenomenal. And, but then we get into the 2000s and we see these two people leave uh, Disney animation because they don't like what's going on. And they make their own studio. And like their third movie is Shrek. But that's a bit before this era, I feel. Shrek, Shrek I is... pre Shrek was like 2000, 2001. Yeah. yeah. Shrek 2 came out in this You're era. You're breaking the rules. What yeah. What I'm saying is that uh, this era uh, shown that Disney's not the only place for 
good quality animation, mm-hmm. uh, theater worthy animation. Um, Shrek two comes out here and that like helps prove that DreamWorks shark tail. <laughs> yeah. Shark tail. Right. Also played that tie in video game. Played it a lot. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I actually think I remember playing a demo for it, but I mean, Shrek, <laughs> Shrek, the first Shrek won the first Oscar for best yeah. animated movie. Yeah. I think, I think people sleep on that. What, what I'm, what I'm saying is that, uh, because of this era, we were able to, we now live in a world where other animation studios have a chance. Also, I think a lot of it has to do with, it hasn't made them make less money, probably, but I think a lot of it does really have to do with Disney moving away from hand-drawn animation. Because mm-hmm. uh, it just feels, this is just me, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, it feels less like artistry when, uh, Obviously it is, and I'm not saying anything against CGI artists, but you look at me in the face and tell me that something like Tangled, which is a movie that's well-beloved, is better art than The Lion King. Hmm. Anybody who says that in the comments, I will find you and I will cut you. (laughs) (laughs) And we're talking about the 1990s Lion King. Yes, please. (laughs) You fucks, all right? Not this animated bullshit. (laughs) Live action. Thank you. Yeah, live you action. It, it's one hundred percent CGI. I, I, I can't. I'm not going to talk about why YMS's two hour long video about it. What did you, In what? the first half, yeah. of his review. <laughs> when did you guys start watching scary movies? Uh, I still haven't started. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think maybe the very first one I ever saw was Sixth Sense. Okay, and that was when I was probably like seven or eight. All right. In 2002, I was introduced to The Ring. <laughs> in which I was forced to watch with my brothers. Huh. And looking back on it now, that's probably where shit started to really fuck with me. <laughs> like You're like 10. <laughs> yeah. Formative. I was maybe, maybe nine. Here's the thing. It was only recently that I figured out what was going on at the ending of The Sixth Sense. You like didn't get that he was a ghost? Story. Oh, no, 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 no. I got all that. I'm I'm talking about all those names at the end. Those are the people that worked on the movie. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. Man, did you hear that second? <laughs> Incredible. What a fucking stupid joke. Oh. You've That's done good. it again. What the hell is his name? Shamelessly. Shyamalan Nolagamban. <laughs> Shamelessly <laughs> stolen from the internet. Shamalama ding dong. What a zoomer. That's not my um, original joke. Here's something that's... Uh, so, playing video games in the PlayStation 2 and GameCube era was very important. See, I didn't play a lot of life. games in that era. Yeah? We never not had... Pokemons? Well, like, so... Um, Pokemon showed up when I was like six and never left my life. We <laughs> didn't have any consoles at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought gr- you were a GameCube house. No. My cousin had a GameCube, my great-grandparents had a 64, and then my grandparents had a PlayStation. Yeah. So I didn't play video games until I was out and about. What the hell did you do with your life? (laughs) Jerk off, mostly. Read books? Uh, My my brother threw an aluminum bat at me. That's what I was doing. It was aluminum. (laughs) Explains a lot. (laughs) Hit me in the legs, not the head. Doesn't explain nothing. (laughs) The... (laughs) The act of playing games at this time was very different. Yeah. I, even as I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm thinking about all the ways that these are different. <laughs> like, first off, you had a CRT TV yep. in either your bedroom or game room, if you were bougie enough to have a game room. And you had to plug the RCA cables... <laughs> The red, white, and yellow cables into this CRT. Or if your CRT didn't have RCA inputs, you had to get, like, a separate VCR that plugged into your TV. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to do. And then you had to go to Channel 3. Yep. The (laughs) blue screen, Channel 3. Kids today don't know what Channel 3 is. Right. (laughs) Dude. And you were probably, like, you probably had, like, a chair that you sat in in front of this, you know, it was... Probably like a 24 inch TV because 
a 24 inch TV weighed would have weighed 300 three, pounds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you need a crane to get it in and out of the room. <laughs> Do you know, like, here it is. Remember? <laughs> this is the era that rabbit ears died. What? Rabbit ears? On top of the TV. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I didn't have cable growing up, so I had to fucking adjust the goddamn antenna mm-hmm. to, like, watch Yu-Gi-Oh! on Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Dude. I don't think there was a more important TV show to us growing up than Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> but Scott and I immediately both look up to start thinking about it. I think uh, Yu-Gi-Oh dominated my childhood. Yu-Gi-Oh's pretty big. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, maybe. I also have Dragon Ball Z. WB Kids here. and Fox Kids. Specifically for this area, you for this era, Yu-Gi-Oh and Teen Titans. Teen, yep. Those Teen are the Titans. two really big ones that Teen I Titans just huge. loved. Yu-Gi-Oh started in two thousand one. Teen <sighs> Titans started in two thousand three. Yeah, I think. A lot of my personality is based around Ed from Ed, Ed, Nettie. I get that. Ed, <laughs> Ed, Ed, Nettie was also a big cartoon yeah. growing up. Cartoon like, Network was just on fire. Dude, cartoon Network was the banger sh- after Samurai banger. Jack, bro? Yeah, dude. Dude. The original. And it was, like, like yeah. really violent. Even Like, there's that one scene mm-hmm. uh, in one episode where he's, like, fighting robots, obviously, and... It like he slices a robot in half, and then its oil shoots all over him. Yeah. And it's just, like, black... But it's blood. The idea was it was supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to be, he's supposed to be covered in blood. Yeah. And like you just see his eyes open up and it's just like, oh, fuck. Gindy Tartakovsky, he's he's a genius, genuinely. Mm. There's just the idea of Saturday morning cartoons, I feel, has gone to the wayside. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just don't watch Saturday morning cartoons anymore. uh, For like, I've noticed whenever I would have to babysit my niece or nephew, um, there would be like really light cartoons that were like for like probably kids that were like seven or younger but it was like your paul patrol and dora mm-hmm. the explorer still around and paul patrol like that. Uh, is a device made to make children acclimate themselves to the police state yeah yes submit to authority yeah. is that is that an actual thing similar to I guess uh, I see it. elf on the shelf mm-hmm. wait yeah. really yeah I, mean, I, th- I believe that it's to aqu- it's to make Make kids, first off, Paw Patrol is so, trust the police, it's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. do exactly what they say. Mm-hmm. Elf on the Shelf is, you're always being looked at, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> I see. Mm-hmm. In fact, you set it up in your home. It's your fault yeah. that you're being watched. And Oh, man. I think the importance of Saturday morning cartoons has faded in the streaming era. Mm-hmm. Right. Because this era, there was no streaming. Netflix was still mailing DVDs to your house yeah. at this point. And so, there was no, like... If you missed an episode, sorry, <laughs> if you didn't see it at the time that it aired, you just had to hope. Wait for the DVD. You either have to get a DVD or hope that it came on a rerun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do I remember Dragon Ball Z would not uh, air its new episodes until like midnight. Mm-hmm. And so Tunami. my parents would get, Tunami. yeah, Toonami. And my parents would get pissed because they're like, you need to go to bed. And I'm like, okay, I'll go to bed. I it's need like to see if he beats Frieza. Well, it's like 1030 and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to bed. And then, like, they would go upstairs, and I'm like, do, 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 do. yes. <laughs> uh, and I'd have to make sure it's down to like five on the volume, and I couldn't watch it in the living room because, like, the light would be showing <laughs> up, and they could see it be like something be flashing. So I'm like, what? I would pause it, like, turn it off <laughs> when I hear noises. <laughs> see, uh, what we we didn't go to uh, the. Uh, uh, movie rental places and we didn't use netflix or anything so a l- like waiting was a big thing because like uh growing up i knew all right uh my grandparents they have dish we don't so i know that uh the wizard of oz comes out on the amc channel <laughs> every like august or september like somewhere around there they play it Mm-hmm. For some reason. Um, and so I was like, that got in my head. Like, I get to see it in like three months. Uh, I get to watch it again with my grandparents. Yeah, they uh, like those channels like Turner Classic Movies or AMC. They would just have a like two dozen movies that they would play in the month of July. 
mm-hmm. and then they would just cycle through their back catalog every month. And then if you mm-hmm. didn't see it, you just have to wait till next year. Or like if it's Elvis's birthday, all Elvis movie marathon. Mm-hmm. Um, Why? I can't believe I'm just now thinking this. So why wasn't there a VCR but for DVDs? A DVD player? No, like a video cassette recorder but for DVDs. Oh, to like burn a disc? Like I Oh, to like record. Yeah, it. Like, like I can li- I can record a sports uh, sh- football game with a cassette tape. Why yeah. couldn't I do that with a DVD? I uh, my brother could. I th- I don't know. I never how, had though. anything like that. I think the so the I think the window between when the uh, VHS was created and uh, the DVD was created, uh, or at least became mainstream popular, um, was wide enough that there was a need to be able to record things on television. However, the DVR had already been invented. And was already mm. seeing application. I don't know. Too man. close to the DVD coming out. So when it reached uh, lower income housing, uh, it was like matched up already. So you People didn't need to... still use discs. Yeah. Fair. But I'm saying that's why we probably didn't see I something know like that. My brother had something that he could burn. Music. Uh, n- movies and stuff on DVDs. But like live? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because he would pay for like pay per view for like wrestling and stuff, and then he would record it on DVD so that he still had it for later use. Wow! Really? So you, you know, can like jerk off the Hulk Hogan or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. Uh, See, speaking that's... of jerking off, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to return to Spider Man One. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! Um, I think Spider Man One is where the initial heartbeat of me liking girls came from. Yeah. <laughs> because Dunst. yep. I, she, I'm I'm gonna give her the very first. I'm gonna give it to it. The first boobies I saw was <laughs> yeah. hers. Yeah. That that rain scene. Like we were talking a while back. Like, hey, what was the first movie that made you like? Like, oh, I like I like girls or whatever. Whatever your preference is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like like that scene. I'm like sitting there with my parents or my brothers. I'm like. I shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> I, but I don't want to look away. <laughs> I think my first time was a little more explicit. Oh, I def- do I tell. definitely watched Spider Man, and I definitely saw that scene. Although I don't think I was old enough to recognize what was happening in that scene. I was still a bit younger than you guys. I was, I think, I was seven. No, my awakening came when my parents had rented Forty Days and Forty Nights, starring oh. Josh Hartnett. Yeah, Josh Hartman. I don't even know this movie. Uh, The premise of the movie is that Josh Hartnett, for Lent, I think, gives up sex. (laughs) And by the end of the movie, he is hallucinating naked women all (laughs) over the place. And (laughs) my parents get done watching this movie with us. With you? (laughs) Yeah, I don't think they were expecting this. Um... And we get done with the movie, and me and my brother, I hope I'm not outing him for this, (laughs) get the DVD out of the DVD player, (laughs) run into the only other room in the house that had a DVD player, which was my parents' bedroom, (laughs) and and we were like, no, no, go to to the last scene, go to the last scene, (laughs) go to scene 17. Uh, And then my dad came in, and he's like... Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he didn't say that, but he, he was very firm. <laughs> Dude, um, that's awesome. And oh, then wow. and then uh the rest of my childhood was would me just trying to sneak a sneak 40 days and 40 nights incredible it, it, uh, uh, views of it. That was like just the just the idea of DVDs seems so antiquated now, but they were so cool in the 2000s. Yeah. Like all the stuff that came on DVDs besides the movie, like your bonus features mm-hmm. and your deleted scenes and like Commentary. commentaries, all the behind the scenes stuff, cool menus, secrets that they hid inside memories. There were certain yeah. little kids movies like Lion King and shit that had like games. Right. Mm-hmm. 
And I, it's, well, it's like everything is just completely digital. There's no physical media anymore. And so, but even with like Blu-rays, I don't really, when Blu-rays have so much more space, yeah. I feel like it's very hit or miss yeah. if they have bonus features or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was like an expected thing is you could see like a making of documentary on a DVD mm-hmm. for a movie. Also um, box sets for TV shows. That's mm-hmm. completely dead. Nobody does that anymore. But it was like the shit. Back in the day, mm-hmm. it was how you watched a show like I'm talking, going to talk about in a second, uh, Lost. People, the only way for people to watch Lost and like know what the fuck was going on was with the DVD box set. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lost was huge for for this era in me, for me. It made me realize just now that binge watching shows is not a new phenomenon. The medium by which you binge watch shows has changed, mm-hmm. but there were definitely like marathons on tvs and dvd box sets that Mm -hmm. people would just plow through Mm -hmm. even as far even as late as when i was in college i was i remember a very specific day where i had a very bad day it had been long and i just sit down in my dorm lounge in a chair and i watch eight hours nonstop of swamp people (laughs) on the history channel (laughs) i didn't move for eight hours people would come people would go and I just and sat just there chilling. watching Swamp oh People. Look at, them, look at them gators. <laughs> look at them go. There's like a subconscious rule for me that I can't pause when I'm watching because like I couldn't do it back then. Mm-hmm. I had to run to the bathroom. You need to grow out of that. When there was, I, it's, it's like I'm trying to and I am for the most part, but like it still feels wrong to me to pause the show or the movie in the middle of an episode and go to the bathroom or make some food or something like if i'm if i'm watching a show like loki the other the other day i was like oh man i want some popcorn so i just got up and made some popcorn and was listening to the show and i'm like i'm like i'm going to hurry up and get this popcorn in there throw it on for two and a half minutes go start watching the show some more what what you are referring to is again it's a, it's a dead, dead. Yeah. it's something dead because this haste that was required when you were watching a show live is yeah, the way for commercials. The commercial break yep. is such a dead concept, it feels like now. I mean, obviously, especially with what's going on with YouTube right now, is like ads are still ubiquitous, but mm-hmm. TV advertisement and commercials in between shows was so important, I guess, mm-hmm. to this era of consuming media. I had to know the exact minimum amount of time i needed for like hot pockets or pizza rolls to be done in the microwave enough for me to eat (laughs) so i could get back before the commercial break was over so i didn't miss anything that's why that's why a 30 minute show is only 20 one minutes long Mm -hmm. that that might not be readily apparent to people Uh, again this is this sounds like i'm (laughs) such an old man shouting we're all gonna feel like dog shit at the end of this (laughs) But that's why a 30 minute show is 21 minutes it's because there was nine minutes of advertisement. If you're going back and watching you mm-hmm. know, shows on a streaming platform. This might also be why in modern, I mean, maybe people have always said this, I don't know, but my perception of it is that people now are keep saying, oh, the Super, Super Bowl commercials suck dick. These yeah. were awful. Maybe it's because we, what we expect has, the goalposts have shifted incredibly mm-hmm. since we were kids. Mm-hmm. The Super Bowl commercial just had to be entertaining compared to a normal commercial. Now it has to be entertaining compared to we don't get commercials anymore. Yeah. 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 Yep. Like you could watch like some TikToks yeah. or, or like a short YouTube video and like, oh, there goes the Mountain Dew commercial. Who cares? Yeah. Five uh, seconds. Skip. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we just had a chain of yeps. <laughs> uh, is the Super Bowl... The only time we legitimately watch commercials anymore? That's I think the only time I do. You'd, I think it's the only time people go out of their way to watch ads anymore, for sure. Mm-hmm. And it's not like when you were watching TV live in the 2000s, you were going out of your way to watch t- commercials. It was baked in to it. the experience. You yeah. had to. Because, like, even, like, I'm trying to think. The Super Bowl was big for funny commercials and movie trailers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was, like, gigantic. I remember seeing the trailer for... Fuck, I don't know. Fantastic Four, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was the first one. And I'm like, oh my god, it's a Marvel movie. I already love Marvel. And look at Jessica Alba. She's naked in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last movie trailer that I saw on television that I got excited for 
was probably Star Wars uh, three seven. Oh oh, hmm. well, I don't even remember what it's called anymore. Force Before, the Force Awakens, Jesus. Yeah. Like, but like that that opening that was like that reignited the my Soul childhood. Japan, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think there's any other trailer I've legitimately been excited for. And <laughs> yeah. Commercials were just, I went back and watched, like, tons of old commercials from this era, and they are so different, um, and they are so dated. First off, 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah, was yeah. in 4 by 3 uh, uh, Everything had, like, cool guitar riffs and, like, s- like faux metal, there's cheesy one. sound effects of, like, punches for no reason, <laughs> lens flares, flashing lights everywhere. Epilepsy didn't exist. <laughs> Apparently, not epilepsy was not on anybody's radar in 2004. Some of them are like a little bit questionable too. Like I'm trying to remember the one about the Bigfoot men. Oh, that uh, were like Jack Links. Was it that Jack Links? But it was like they were like they were like not not the not like the newer Sasquatches, but there were like two of them that would like run around. They were like in normal ass clothes and everything. Oh, cavemen. Yeah, cavemen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like their. One of their, like, mascots, yeah. really. There yeah. were so many Geico Caveman commercials. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you saw them constantly. Yep. They were so repetitive. I still have that one burned into my head of the caveman walking on the... I don't even know what you call him at the airport. That's just, like, the auto... Oh, yeah, the... Walking yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he is just going and just, like, looking at his watch, like, waiting for his his uh, plane or whatever, and he just passes that, that Geico thing that says, so easy a caveman could do it or whatever. And he and he doesn't register with it at first. He's like, and then you see him like the camera just stops on him. And he like <laughs> walks like, back and he's like, back. Oh, <laughs> and he, and he, like looks upset and he have, just keeps rolling. Have any of you been to an airport at that point in your life? No, no, I've still never been one. Uh, I don't think I went to an airport until I was twenty two or twenty three. Yeah, and like so, like back then, all that was like so crazy to me. And then I saw all that walkway. I was like. Hey, like the caveman. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, was there any music surreal. in 2002 for you guys? No. So, I did not get into music and still I know exactly when. It was in 2006 <laughs> when Guitar Hero 2 came out. Oh yeah. Okay. Before then, music was a non-entity to me. I listened to music in the car when my parents were driving me. And I was either listening to 104.7 if my dad was driving, mm-hmm. which is the mm-hmm. classic rock station in Dayton. Or I was listening to either Bon Jovi's Greatest Hits or Garth Brooks' Greatest Hits if my mom was driving. Thunder Rolls. That was the only music I heard okay. growing up until two, until I was 11. And you introduced me, Scott introduced me to Guitar Hero 2. Scott, interestingly enough, Scott was a revitalization of music for me. Yeah. Um, music was starting to become a thing for me in like 2000, 2001, 2002. And then my sister died. And she was the one who introduced Ripped. me to things. Like, she's the reason I even knew Green Day existed. Mm-hmm. She's also the reason I had a crush on Avril Lavigne. Oh, well, actually. everybody did. Everybody did. I like her, her first eyes. song came out in 2002. I have a list here of all my uh, uh, childhood crushes. <laughs> I, it was Avril Lavigne, going... Kirsten Dunst, Hilary Duff, Amanda Bynes, sure. and uh, Lindsay Lohan. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm glad that this has been broached because I also made a list in my head that I'm like... <laughs> I hope I'm not the weird one who did this. <laughs> well, I think I had a bit of a, like, I had a younger sister, and so I was just exposed to a lot of... Poppy stuff. Poppy stuff, and, mm-hmm. like, girly movies. Like, She's the Man, and What a Girl Wants. She's the Man's a good movie, though. It is. It is. I did, And, like, once we get to 2004 proper, like, Mean Girls is such an important yeah, movie in my childhood. Uh, Cinderella Story with Hilary Duff... Um, what else? <laughs> I, I, I've got a whole list of, like, just, like, girly stuff that I was into at this time, just because I had a sister. Did you ever watch The Hot Chick? The Hot Chick. That's yeah. the sounds... one where, uh... Oh, I'm thinking of Hot Chicks with the Wayans brothers. White oh, Chicks. No, no, no. That's White, white chicks. chicks, my bad. Um, that popular song came out in 2002. The... Yeah, da, 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 I yeah. <laughs> had no idea. I couldn't even tell you who sung it until I started trying to look that I stuff still up. don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Hot Chicks, or The Hot Chick is a movie where... With Rob Schneider. Yeah. Yes. Where she body flips with somebody. Yep. 
and she's trying to convince her friends that that's actually her, and she gets fucking maced. And <laughs> she's like, she's like sitting there on her knees, telling this chick's deepest, darkest secrets at the football field. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> Did this come out before or after Freaky Friday? I think the, freaky, the well, original Freaky Friday came out way long ago. No, well, I mean, the Lindsay like, Lohan one came out in 2003. It's in my notes. Okay. But yeah. again, a suspiciously similar yeah. plot. Yeah. 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 Probably the reason that I uh, am have weak for redheads is Lindsay Lohan right mm-hmm. there. Um, mine was Kirsten Dunst. I, oh, that too. What am I talking about? Kirsten what am I Dunst, talking about? <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, Jessica Rabbit. I and never liked Jessica Rabbit. We, yeah. we never, I never stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's definitely another redhead I can't think of right now that, uh, that stuck out for me. Also, real quick, we kind of moved away from the subject, but now that we're on this, (laughs) let me just, I will bring up how, how lucky I am. Yeah? That I am not as degenerate as I could be. (laughs) Like, they were brainwashing children Mm -hmm. at this age. I don't know if you are aware of a show on Saturday morning cartoons called Mew Mew Power. Never heard of it. No. Superhero cat girls. Oh, I do remember this. Oh, no. They they had cat ears and short skirts and thigh-high stockings. Yep. And there was a whole team of them. Oh, Starfire. I I was about to say, I was about to to interrupt him. I've never seen this, so explain me then. (laughs) It's just they were super, super pure, super, uh, (laughs) sorry, I get all flustered. No, I'm saying explain explain how I went wrong. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, just like so many things. I think we brought it up before, but. Lack of a male influence in your life. (laughs) 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 Okay, I was going to say Catwoman, <laughs> but fuck you too. Uh, <laughs> Mew Mew Power, Catwoman, the librarian from Extremely Goofy Movie, mm-hmm. Cats. Like, they were, the, the furry agenda <laughs> was alive and well in the 2000s. And I think that's why we have such a pandemic today. Really? Beast Boy. Well, it, <laughs> it started in the 80s, frankly. With? Thundercats. Oh. Like Chitara. Okay. Street Sharks. Teenage Street, Ninja none Turtles. None of the Street Sharks were attractive, and none of the. What are you talking about? The Ninja Turtles. April. Turtles? She April, is a human. April woman. O'Neil is um, a uh, my, gateway person. <laughs> my it's a fucking turtles. <laughs> <laughs> my nephew's high school team uh, <laughs> is the Firebirds. Yeah, and their emblem uh, on their helmet. It looks like the Thundercats emblem with a circle around it. Oh, yeah. So there's no wings or anything. And I'm like, I'm like. You guys aren't the Firebirds, you're the Thundercats. And anybody that was above the age of 30 understood. Everybody below the age of 30 was like, what the fuck is that? Jesus. What are they talking about? They rebooted Thundercats yeah. in like yeah. the 2010s. It sounded of- it it like it didn't, didn't go it well. Didn't last they, also, <laughs> they also rebooted He-Man, and apparently, apparently the She-Ra show is really good. I've heard. I've heard. Great. Oh. Also, April O'Neil, now the redhead. Um... Yeah. I kind of always seen her more as a brunette. She was played by M- M- Megan Fox in so uh, the, the Michael Bay one. Does <laughs> anybody have anything sports related, or do I need to cover that whole subject? You're feel free. Take All it right. away, John. Uh, Tom Brady, ring number one. <laughs> can I have my one thing? <laughs> sure. Um, I remember because this because football season was so big in my house, and I wanted nothing to do with it. Um, but I always liked watching the Super Bowl. And uh, so I remember staying up late, even though I had school the next day, to watch a particular Super Bowl. The which, Janet Jackson one. The Janet Jackson mm-hmm. one. <laughs> so I got to see it live without any It censoring. wasn't even that bad. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, but I remember like... She was wearing protection. Yeah. yeah. She had those, what do you call it them? It was staged. You think Pasties. so? Yes. Pasty, that's the one. Pasty. It was. It was definitely wow. staged. We've we've come full circle. In 2004, <laughs> people thought Justin Timberlake was a piece of shit for doing that, and now in 2023, <laughs> he's an actual piece of shit. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh. That that's my one thing from the time about sports. I shockingly, uh, was I had something to talk about. Oh, it was in this era that I was really into NASCAR. And uh, I played those fucking games, the NASCAR games, and I was just really into the racing uh, scene. Um, 
not not so bad that I wanted to be one or anything, mm-hmm. but uh, I rooted for Jeff Gordon. I remember yep. this. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think, so this was around the time where I'm like, I grew into my, I don't want to root for the same person as you, but I want to be on the same team as you. Yeah. So like, you were like, Iron Man. I'm like, Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Jeff Gordon. I'm like, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> it's twice 24. the number. <laughs> He's like, yeah. he's like Wolverine. I'm like, yeah, Cyclops. Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're losing on that one. Also, Gene Gray. Gene Gray, Gray. X Men. Gene Gray is another, another, another yeah. great one. Yep. Famke Jansen. Yep. Oh man, you what sound, a lady! You sound like you're trying to do a fucking Eminem uh, freestyle. Well, that, what do you say your name? <laughs> like Famke Jansen. Blame it on Famke Jansen. Blame it on. God. Another another classic movie trilogy that was going X-Men. on in this time. The X Men, the original X Men trilogy. Yep. Um, which I didn't know this. Did you know that the official title of the second X Men movie is X Two? X Men United. Yeah. No, it's just X Two. Oh. What? The subtitle I, on my DVD said X Men United. Apparently, it's been yeah, retroactively yeah. changed. Mm. Oh. Interesting, but uh, obviously, Fan Chance is a beautiful lady. But mm-hmm. dude, Halle Berry, you can oh, make. Halle Berry, she, she was the winner in that oh, movie. Dude. Those storm, movies. you know what happens when a toad <laughs> is struck by lightning? Same thing, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, gonna happen. <laughs> Chris is like, so let's start talking about when we got into chicks with white hair. <laughs> Shut up, it's still a thing, oh, bro. Oh man! That, so <laughs> Beyonce from Oz and Bowers and Golden Number Two. There you go. Obviously, yeah. classic redhead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man! Some more just like classic movies coming out of this time was the X Men trilogy. The Matrix trilogy was wrapping up at this time. Pirates of the Caribbean was starting. Yeah, really? I was gonna say Pirates of the Caribbean was early two thousands. I didn't know that. Two thousand three was uh, Holy Curse of the Black shit, Pearl. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. I did research and everything. We had that on a pirated DVD. Wow, (laughs) the irony. (laughs) Another thing that I don't think gets brought up anymore is pirated DVD. My dad used to work. Did say pirated (laughs) when you were little? No. I don't think so. (laughs) That was what my parents called it, and I was just like, oh, this is right. (laughs) And it wasn't until like two weeks ago when Kyle said (laughs) pirated. Two weeks ago? (laughs) Oh my God, John. I just heard it, and I'm like... (laughs) No one else gonna react to this? <laughs> oh. He mispronounced Am I wrong? It. Am I the problem? <laughs> um my dad used to work at a uh like a car manufacturing plant. He would make yeah. parts for cars that would then get shipped off to be making the car. Right. And he had a co-worker who would be the guy taking the camera to a movie theater and selling the the burn DVDs. I was just about to bring up yeah. burn DVDs from flea yeah. markets. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Awful quality. <laughs> yeah, I now got to watch the movie for fucking two dollars. <laughs> okay, so on a very similar strain, my uh, grandfather worked at um, the Dayton Daily News, um, and he was like one of the main press operators. Right, he had a coworker who would <laughs> burn the DVDs, and um, no joke, uh, the our bootleg copy of the uh, Harry Potter two. Harry Potter one, we had both, uh, both of them unwatchable. Yeah, <laughs> with how because those movies are naturally just so dark, right? Yep. So how much worse is it when it's <laughs> a copy of a copy that somebody recorded from some on their s- un- shitty 480p Dude, camcorder? It was so bro. bad, unwatchable. My mom, one of her favorite movies is the Fantastic Four movie, the first one. Mm-hmm. And I'll show you a rock slide. <laughs> <laughs> she went to a flea market in Tennessee and bought like 30 movies. And she bought one of Fantastic Four. Uh, and like we tried to watch it that night. And no joke, the dude set up his tripod. And then like you could see off in the corner somebody coming up, and he's like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 and he accidentally dropped it. And you hear, you hear a whole ass conversation where a guy like the fucking uh, the usher or something. Usher, yeah, whatever. It was like, 
Is everything okay? He's like, he's like, ah, oh, yes, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. And like, and like, he's like, okay, enjoy your movie. It's just dark. And like, and like, they picked it back up. And he said it back up. But there was just three minutes where you see the movie in this conversation. Oh my god, that's incredible. Do you remember what movie were we watching? I had very distinct memories of two oh. pirated DVDs that we were watching. She so after we watched it real fast, she went back to the same person on the flea market. And asked them if they had any other copies. And the dude had two separate burn or uh, pirated copy. <laughs> two separate pirated copies of, of Fantastic Four from two different people that recorded it. Wow. And I'm just like, this this person, this person is committed. I, I remember, I think it was an X-Men movie that we watched that was pirated. And I believe, no, no, I know exactly what it was. Okay, this is a, this is a little later. Uh, this is when we were driving, but I believe it was X Men First Class. It was, and it had just been released, and you had a pirated copy of it, and it was so bad that we were like, "Do you want to just go to the movie theater <laughs> and buy tickets to watch this?" And so we loaded up into uh, my grandma's Chevy Impala. And we started to drive, and then we got pulled over by that cop oh, because my license plate was light was yeah. out. Uh, it was me, you, uh, John, Scott, we, me, and Kyle. We made it ten minutes into the drive and had to turn around. Yep, <laughs> because this asshole cop starts harassing us because my uh, license plate light is out. And he was, like, giving us such a hard time because you didn't have, didn't an, have ID. an ID. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm going easy on you, but, you know, if you're not going to be able to identify yourself, I could take you down to the station. Like, okay, and, all right, I got nothing, bud. And he kept us so long that we l- missed the movie. Yeah. And we just had to drive home. <laughs> dude. And we got in a still, big you, fight. You know what? Home. Oh, yeah, dude. I That was... That was like one of the one of the shaky moments for us. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, was just, I got mad at Kyle. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Kyle was like, Kyle was the one who was like full like, well, I get why the cop was doing. We're all like, fuck you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I still think about how I regret not sticking up for you more. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> I, I think about that fairly rarely. I, if, if, I I could, <laughs> if, I, if I could do it over again, which I can't, uh, so I won't. But if I, I would have got could, out of my car and beat that cop. <laughs> <laughs> No, I would. Don't I would tease me, bro. <laughs> Another classic video, I think, from this era. Um, maybe a little later, but no, I would. I would have been like, no. If you're taking him down to the station, you're taking me down to the station too. <laughs> Fuck you, yeah. mess with one of us. You mess with all of us, pal. Uh, Return to the the pirated DVDs. Pirated. Um, the three I had that I remember were Night at the Museum, Harry Potter Three, and Mars Needs Moms. <laughs> <laughs> What's that even about? I don't know. I, it was disgusting to look at. That's yeah. all I can tell you. Uh, oh but uh, with and the, then you had to deal with the pirated copy. The none of the museum one that always shocked me was I don't know how the guy did it. It was in theaters. He had like a DVD menu and everything. What? Like, and it was not him filming. It was just a rip of the movie. Wow. Oh my gosh. I don't know how we did that. That's top notch quality right there. Maybe he worked in <laughs> What if you have he the just, menu? He worked with my dad. <laughs> what if you what if he had the menu but then when you press play it's just slightly tilted? <laughs> <laughs> it was just a it was just the movie. Like was, he just used this as a practice to like make movie menus. Incredible. I always loved uh the whole thing where like you'd be watching a pirated movie and then you just see a shadow of somebody move because they went yeah. in front of the <laughs> Well Guys, this has been fun. Uh, I guess tune in next week for 2003. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we can go a little longer. I haven't even talked about Lost. Yeah, the main go ahead thing and I talk wa- about Lost. The main thing I want to talk about with Lost was, um, if you are a fan of Lost now, or what I'm about to say intrigues you at all, I highly recommend, regardless of whether you've seen it, you go to watch the Billiam YouTube channel. He has uh, three ep- three videos up right now that are like fucking 10 hours of content <laughs> about Lost. And he, like, put in little TV bumpers about, uh, like, when the new episode's going to come out. And the, the announcer's like, who will the, who will die on the island? Mm-hmm. One person's going to come out as gay. And, 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 <laughs> and like, the, the thing that I think Lost is in this area of, I keep saying this, is in this area of transition <laughs> between what good TV is and what it was. And I think a lot of it has to do with DVD box sets, where... 
There are so many motherfucking episodes of Lost per season. Imagine a show like Loki, which is, I suppose, prestige television, having 24 motherfucking episodes in one season. Hour long, filled to the brim with commercial breaks, uh, <laughs> episodes. And uh, at the time, I only know this because of Billiam. Again, check out the channel. Uh, Billiam said that at the time, Lost Pilot was the most expensive pilot ever filmed. And when you watch it, I believe it, it's just a two hour movie. It's incredible. And uh, I, I, I remember seeing the trailer for it when I was a kid. This came out in 2004. And I think I was in fifth grade at the time. I think it came at the end of 2004. Or while it was playing, I was definitely in fifth grade. But I remember seeing the trailer and being like, Mom, we have to watch this. And uh, we did. I fell in love. I'm like, oh my God, what's the monster? What's happening? Why are they on this island? Are they dead? Were they dead the whole time? I don't know. And <laughs> I remember just going through and watching it and writing the show. My mom fell out of interest with it. But I always loved it. And then, but I didn't have a TV in my room at the time, so I had to stop watching Eight years go by, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I really like Lost. I wish I had seen the whole show. Um, and fucking G4 played mm -hmm. a marathon of uh, the entire series, and I had only seen, like, the first two seasons. And you were like, and oh, so, my and I, God. I had a DVR at the time, so I just recorded the entire series, uh, and I had to watch it and delete it as as they as it went because uh, it was too much. Oh wow! Because <laughs> there were so many goddamn episodes <laughs> in that show. They had six seasons, and I think there's like 170 episodes. Jesus Christ, man! <clears throat> um, but uh, it's great. I I genuinely think it's great. I think it's a great show. That if there were 50 percent less of it, it would be one of the best shows of all time, because there's just a lot of fluff. There's a lot of stuff going on that, and I think it's a hallmark of TV back then, especially mm -hmm. like live action shit, like the, your CSIs, your NCISs, your That's why One Piece orders. is so long. Yeah, the fluff, sure. <laughs> they, we got to find out why he's on the boat. <laughs> uh, but there's so many little moments that just define this era for me from Lost. We Like, if you know, you know. Not Penny's boat. Not Penny's boat was the closest I ever came to crying as a child because one of my favorite characters uh i say that like guys okay <clears throat> guys i'm not i'm not sick <laughs> i just was tough to phase as a kid i still am but uh one of my favorite characters was charlie he's kind of like him and hurley are like the heart of the island especially hurley okay. and charlie dies spoiler alert it's it's not really that huge of a spoiler because they already teased his death in the first season. And again, Lost is one of those shows people like to talk about with um, like, oh, they were making it up as they go. And like, yeah, they were. I think they were making up fucking Breaking Bad as they went. We They've, they've already talked about how they were planning on killing Aaron Paul at the end of the first season in Breaking Bad. But he was a mainstay. They loved his performance. And so they're like, all right, let's change that. He's great. Same with uh, Hank in Breaking Bad. Uh, I only know this because of Billiam, again. <laughs> but um, they have this perception that the show was made up as it went, and I really do think it was. I think a lot of shows were, but not where near as much as one might assume it was. I think it's it's a symptom of the, the what's the word I'm looking for? Like the channel it was on, the studio. The studio clashing mm -hmm. with the creators. Because the creators... We're like, okay, let's make this show, and it'll end in six seasons. Or five, I think, was their plan. And the studio's like, no, 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 I want this to be like a Grey's Anatomy. I want this to keep going. If they had their way, we'd still be getting episode season 24 of Lost. Jesus. And, <laughs> uh, like, they'd still be on that fucking island. <laughs> it would be like Gilligan's Island, but serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, for me at least indicative of just tv at the time it just feels like it feels like they were flirting with something that then became what prestige tv is today and i can't really i watched the entire first season when i knew you we were going to do this corner and holy fuck i love it dude i had a such a huge crush on um i can't remember her actress's name something kwan i think uh, her name's sun in the show and the only unfortunate thing is they definitely had there were two, like, 
uh, there's like four um, attractive ladies in the main cast, and they definitely were like, hey, all right, let's get a shot of her, like, in her bikini. Mm. Uh, and it, it kind of makes sense, because they're on an island, but it was pretty gratuitous. I didn't understand what fan service was until I was, like, a teenager. Yeah. But, like, when I was younger, I was like, dude, I can't believe they did this. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, creators of Spider-Man. Like... <laughs> So you unlocked a memory for me. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> when you're like TV bumpers, uh, because I don't see this anymore. Um, yeah. Why would we? Because I don't. Uh, Imagine if they did TV <sighs> bumpers for like the Marvels or, or, or what's a show that's on for like a secret Shulk. invasion yeah, yeah. or Shulk. We're like, oh, on the next episode of Shulk, she's going to be a fucking bitch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, um, I remember watching uh, the CW. Yeah, right. hell yeah. Um, before they started calling it the CW and went all like WB. Yeah. Uh, and so what they would do is I would be I would be just watching that '70s show, right? Or Will and Grace or whatever's on, and <clears throat> it's like a little banner would show up at None the of bottom. Those shows were on CW, but <laughs> <laughs> that seven, the '70s show was on reruns on the CW. I mean, maybe. Okay. I watched it. Prove it. It was like the only channel I watched. Um, Irrelevant to the Chris, story. Chris, your life yeah. was a lie. So what they would do is, uh, at the very bottom of the screen, you would have this little yep. banner, and it would be like, this episode, or uh, this show, or whatever. And then they would have like, two of the main characters just there. Yeah, just like, like hanging around all the like, yeah. green. Yeah. 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 That was a popular like, fucking uh, Disney Channel thing, too. Mm -hmm. If I was just watching a YouTube video and that <laughs> happened, I would go, I would fucking flip out. Yeah. Um, you would think they were doing it ironically. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you you unlocked a memory for me. This was the moment I think I stopped watching Family Guy because it just made me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They did a bit where... I was thinking about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, they were advertising The Simpsons and it was like Marge doing that thing. And then a tiny quagmire came and like tried to molest her oh my god and it made me feel really weird and i'm like i don't think i liked that <laughs> <laughs> i had i had that 70s show as a pivotal tv show of my youth yeah i feel like a lot of my personality especially at the time but maybe still was shaped by me somewhat emulating eric foreman you give off in your clothes and your hair a 70s Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, aesthetic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Danny Masterson's a Scientologist. I think that's not the most relevant thing about him anymore. <laughs> he wants it to be. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Another important uh, TV show, Mythbusters. Yeah. Right. Came oh, out hell yeah. Was right like Jeff. never Peaking. watched it once. Carrie Byron, Redhead. There uh, you go. Carrie Byron, Redhead. Yep. When did the never Science Channel become a thing? Was that later? never in my life? It, sure. I, I have no idea when, but I didn't start watching it until I was like well into my teens. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, like another educational show was Crocodile Hunter. Oh yeah. Like Steve Irwin was like again at his peak at this era mm -hmm. and just tragically oh. cut his his life was cut short how in like, I think two thousand six. Two thousand six. I was about to yeah, say. Yeah. How did I forget to add him to this? Yeah. So Dude. much of my childhood was watching Animal Planet mm -hmm. and watching him. On Crocodile Hunter. I never liked him because he was just so rough with the animals. Uh, I just assumed that he knew best. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, he'd hop on the fucking croc and be like, oh, crocky, this is a wild one, mate. Well, it's just so weird to me because it was either that or fucking nothing. They would just be far away <laughs> looking at it. I'm like, why wouldn't they just look at it? Why is he molesting this poor crocodile? <laughs> that crocodile's like laying there fucking getting its tan on. Mm -hmm. And then just a fucking 250 pound man just jumps on him. What am I learning about this crocodile by watching you wrestle it, dude? <laughs> and he, here's my, here's my soapbox. He is well beloved for doing this. Why? I think it was the work he did behind the scenes. He did sure. a lot of work for like mm -hmm. conservation and mm -hmm. outreach and public awareness. And I have or... no idea how true this is, but as soon as I heard he was stung to death by a stingray, the first place my head went, hit, head went was he was molesting that guy. There's no <laughs> way he wasn't messing with that stingray and it just went right into his chest. There wasn't actually any footage, was there? I think like there, there was. was, there I was think they there was. were filming a documentary. Okay. I think they, they never released it. Of course not. 
Because I remember seeing footage of him like swimming with stingrays, but I didn't. I don't remember ever seeing the actual like killer shot. I guess that's technically lost media. I, I guess I still. Uh, I I will see. Is like, it lost media if it was never released? I think so. Okay. Like s- uh, the it's also lost media for Grizzly Man, the guy who. Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. God. Apparently. Timothy Treadwell. Yeah. Yeah. He. He. Um. What an idiot. <laughs> uh, he had a camera out. He was just living with bears with him and his girlfriend, I think. Yep. It might have been a wife, but I'm not sure. But um, he was just way too close to the bears, and he was one of these guys who was like, oh, I know these bears. They're okay. They're, they're okay, bears. He gets fucking eaten on camera, and uh, luckily, thank Christ, there was the lens cap was on on the camera. Literally, he had just turned it on when the bear was approaching, and it started eating him and his girlfriend, and there was a documentary I watched called Grizzly Man, I think, where the documentarian was listening to the footage, and he was just like, okay. <laughs> I think this should be destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. Dude. Hardcore. Um, you know, <laughs> good place to end. <laughs> Yeah, do we do, a, do, we do a part two of this? I would love to do a part we two of this. Lot there's a lot stuff. that I haven't talked about. Okay. Sure. We'll break it up. And we'll have Kyle here next time. He, yeah. I'm sure he'll have some insights. Plenty of insight. Uh, coming up next time, 4chan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, interesting. 2003, baby. Were you on 4chan? I, until my parents kicked me off. Really? Really? Yep. Were you like on B looking at like... Like heads, I like dicks saw, getting cut off. I saw messed up things. Okay, <laughs> well, I saw messed up things that I'm like, whoa! <laughs> I never in a million years would have guessed that you were on 4chan before. Um, me. the first, I mean, this gets explicit. You guys, it's 4chan. Maybe we save it. Or do I have other things. L- this little teaser too. I have uh, other things. It, it, you, we shouldn't say. It. I shouldn't say it on here. I'll say it after the camera's off. Okay, <laughs> sure. Well. <laughs> Check out other episodes of the podcast. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification button in order so you can see the ghost episode when it comes out. And, you know, you have a good time. Goodbye, everybody. 